Daz, what's good? What's up, Vlad? It's Craig Lagan. Hey, man. First time officially on Vlad TV. You motherfucking right. <laughs> All right, so you got a new uh, movie project coming. Yeah, Epidemic. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Me and Dada, along with you. And, uh, you know, and just uh, putting these episodes together and, you know, coming with the reality of life and bringing it straight. Okay, so who are you working with on this? Dada, me, and a bunch of homies, you know what I'm saying? And uh, we got another movie called The Spizz. You know, me and Dada, we're a uh, production team together. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So we got Speeds Out, a bunch of other movies that we're doing, and just keeping the drama and visual in your face. All right. Now, I mean, being in the dog pound, are we going to see other dog pound affiliates and, and so forth, extended Every family? Every day. Every day. Every day. So Don't stop. So um, you've seen Money and Violence. Yeah, I like Money and Violence. I you like know, Shane. Yeah, we, we've interviewed the, you know, the team. Yeah. I think they really pulled off some dope shit. Yeah, they pulled it off. This is going to be some West Coast shit. That's what we're bringing to you. You know okay. what I'm saying? That formula. You know what I'm saying? Gritty West Coast gang bang. Young, old, homie shit. You know what I'm saying? And crooked police and just everything that got to do with the West Coast. When you wake up in the morning, West Coast. So give me an example about how the first episode is going to start out. You know what I'm saying? Uh, start off with trickery women, scandalous homies, you know? Mm -hmm. Just that whole series of having money and not having money and, you know, and, and coming up with a good plan, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, to come home with something. Right. Now, you grew up where, in, where now? I grew up in Long Beach, California. Okay, so you grew up in Long Beach. Yeah. Snoop's your cousin? Sir. Okay. So you were born in Long Beach? Yeah. Okay. Born in Long Beach. All right. Now, what was it like growing up in Long Beach during that time, during the, the 70s and 80s? Ooh, a lot of ass whippings. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, really? I was a bad child. You know what I'm saying? Me and Snoop painted the house with mud. <laughs> His mama came home, whipped that ass. He had a water bump on his leg. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you, you, know, you know, when you're getting a whooping, you're hearing somebody else getting a whooping, and you just standing there, you know, you next, you just jumping and jumping. You know, just a lot of ass whooping, and, you know, to learn how to hustle. My cousin Joe Cool, mm -hmm. Flip, you know what I'm saying, and just learning all that and incorporating all that to make who we are right now. Okay. You know now, were you involved in the gang shit real young? Yeah, living up, growing up, banging, you know what I'm saying, and, you know, it, Hey, when you're from the West Coast, that's how you grow up. Your parents and cousins and everybody already in it. So your parents were, were gang members as well? Cousins, you know what I'm saying? Okay. All right. So at what point did you start, you know, getting involved in that actual thing? You start going that as soon as you go to school. First grade? Yeah, you know, you're meeting a lot of other kids. So, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's a lot going on in elementary, preschool, junior high school, mm. high school when you ain't going to school, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so you were clicked up from that early, from elementary yeah, school? you know, just being in that family, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Because my family popping in Long Beach, so, you know. Okay. Just being affiliated. You know, I was DJing and rapping, and, you know, Snoop was rapping, and, you know, I had the turntables, and, you know, I started off DJing. Okay. So, you know, bringing my turntables from the house to the park, here, here, you know, and then rapping in here, here, banging here, you know what I'm saying, going to school here, getting kicked out of school here, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, expelled, smoking weed, you know what I'm saying. Oh, you got expelled from school? Yeah, uh, plenty of times. Multiple times? Multiple times. Multiple schools then? Multiple schools. I went to school in Compton. Because <laughs> you, know you got kicked elementary. out of Long Beach. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Oh, uh, at what point did you really start rapping though? Well, no, actually, no, you started producing first. The That's rapping came later, right? And I've been, you know, it was Motai, you know okay. what I'm saying, all together. You know, I listened to Run DMC, Slick Rick, Big Daddy Kane, Rakim, you know. And then I was uh, used to go to the VIP all the time. Mm -hmm. So Calvin had turntables That's and stuff. That's the record in the store, back. right? Yeah, record store. Yeah. So in the back was, was Slice and, and Larry and, you know, One Eye Mike. And, you know what I'm saying, it had a lot of DJs. And Sir Jinx used to come down there from, from the Lynch Mob. Yeah, yeah, so, you know, bam. We just put it all together and, you know, I've been stealing turntables, you know. So I'm going to throw this in the trash and I got two turntables and a mixer in a box full of trash. Right. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I've, I've done you know, that and that's how I started out. <laughs> okay. And then when you learn how to blend and mix, then you know how to produce and put records together. Sure. Now, 
Uh, was Snoop doing a, Snoop is your older cousin? Snoop my older cousin. Okay, so was he rapping before you? He was rapping before me though, Snoop Rockski. Okay, you know what Snoop Rockski. Yeah. Right. Okay, now I, at one point, I, I remember uh, Corrupt was telling me how he actually battled Snoop. Yeah, I Were wasn't you, there at that time. You weren't there. Who won that battle? That was, it was definitely on the even. On the even. Then dog okay. was tight. <laughs> okay. I mean, Trump. Okay. It was like East meets West. Yeah. Because I'm rapping about beheading people and murder and mayhem and destruction and all this. And as tight as my lyrics was, because my shit, I freestyled everything. Okay. That's all I do. But it was just like, you know, my shit is precision. It's like pinpointing. It's like needles. Mm -hmm. A dog was like that, but he was talking about shit that the, that L.A. could relate to, like 6'4 Chevys and this, that, and this, but he was spilling like corrupt. Yeah, but I heard about it, you know what I'm saying? So, and then corrupt was a part of the crew, and, you know, it, it all put together. Because, you know, me, it was like one night, me and corrupt was hanging out, we was getting high and shit, and we was looking at the moon and shit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, fuck, you know what I'm saying? It's Dr. Dre, you know? And we was like, man, we need to call ourselves the dog pal. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, and from then on, we went and did niggas don't give a fuck. Because we lived in the dog pound. That's what we called our home, the dog pound, the apartment on Franklin and Whitley in Hollywood. Okay. So, you know, like I said before, I was talking to Ice Cube. And he was telling me about the NWA movie. Yeah. So he's like, when Easy die, that leaves an open up for part two. And that's where we come in. Oh. Because when Easy died, it was us. You know what I'm oh, saying? See, y'all, y'all, so they actually talking about NWA, NWA Part 2. Or no, we're going we gonna to make our own called DPG for Life. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because when Easy died, Shug Knight and them still around. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Dr. Dre. And the story from there, what happens after that? No, I mean, you know, the, that, that whole family tree is crazy. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So we, we up next in there. So, you know, we're just putting it together. All right, so Snoop was rapping. You were producing and yeah. rapping. Uh, Snoop hooks up with Dr. Dre, I guess, through Warren G. Yeah, Warren G. Right. So, so he hooked up through Warren G. Um, Snoop got signed to, to Death Row, right? Yeah, Snoop was on Death Row. Snoop was on Death Row. And it said that you were doing some production for Suge's girlfriend at the time? <laughs> Paradise. Paradise, is exactly. Yeah, she was on the Deep Cover soundtrack. Okay. We was writing and producing for her. That was my first project because I had just bought a drum machine. Okay. For my advancement, for signing with Death Row. Oh, so you'd already signed with Death Row at the time? Yeah, we already signed with Death Row because The Chronic was coming out. Okay, all y'all signed to Death Row? Yeah, all of us signed to Death Row. Okay. What was it like to work on The Chronic? I mean, because some people, I mean, The Chronic is one of these projects that people go argue, but a lot of people go say that's the best hip-hop album of all time. Man, it was riots and all kind of shit going on, man. It's just like the best, I think that was the best time of my life. As a, Like I said before, I reached the pinnacle of rap. You know what I mean? I did a song with everybody you ever could think of, produced of, and think of. And it was just a lot of smoking weed. I tell Joe, he stayed downstairs, he had a weed shop. Rest in peace. And uh, we used to go down there and buy all our weed and go up to Solar and make the records with a, you know, with um, motherfucking Shalimar. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, everybody that Dick Griffey had up in there, we was in that studio working. You know what I'm saying? And I was recording over his masters. You know what I'm saying? And he coming in, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> this is. This is Shalimar's master. I'm like, well, hey, I'm going to record me snooping for rough on this thing, you know what I mean? And, uh, and just Dr. Dre showing us track for track. Warren G showed me how to use the drum machine, uh -huh. program the drum machine. But Dr. Dre showed me how to take what I have from the drum machine to track it down on each track uh -huh. and to let my, you know, my imagination and music go on top of that and add to it. And then we start doing the chronic. I start producing, you know what I'm saying? And then I got good at it. How much production did you do on the chronic? I did uh, 
Rat a tat tat. Oh, okay, that was you. Yeah, I love I was, that. Song. That was me scratching on there. Okay. I um rapped on a bunch of songs like Little Ghetto Boy, These Nuts, Did Skits, um, Little Ghetto Boy. You know the strings. I put them in there. Mm -hmm. You know, just Dr. Dre just showed us, you know, how to put it together. Did you know how big it was gonna be before it dropped? Man, I was just listening like, damn, this shit sound good. You know what I'm saying? You know, you listening <laughs> to records and they had like samples and you know that yeah. critty rap, but this shit sounded good. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And Dr. Dre was mixing. I was just happy to be in the vicinity as a young entrepreneur. You know what I'm saying? And right, cause you were how old? At the I time? was 16. Wow. 15 going on 16. Okay. And I got signed at 17. Crazy. The Chronic came out at 17. So, you know, um, the best time of my life. I bet. Yeah, Is all the NWA. That's when Dre left NWA. So it was really going down, you know what I'm saying? Like, we was after EZ. You know what I'm saying? We, you know, we cool with Ice Cube, but at the time, we, you know, it was everybody. You know what I'm saying? But because Dr. Dre said so. You know what I'm saying? So. I mean, when, when the shit came out, <laughs> what's the wildest shit you did? What's the wildest Cause you, shit you Because you were 17 year old on the biggest album in the world. But we didn't really know because we were still in the hood. We didn't know about we could travel here and get, you know what I'm saying? We were still in the hood every day because that's where they kept us, you know? And then Dr. Dre took us to our first show in Chicago with okay. the Ghetto Boys. Okay. Scarface. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, we used to have to steal our food in the morning and shit. The homies get up, one steal the eggs, the bacon, all the other stuff, and we'd run out of the store. And then we used to call the homie L, rest in peace from the dog pound. We'd put 211 187, that let him know that's us. Come to the house, bring four sacks of weed, you know what I'm saying? Because we didn't have no phones. Just to sit on the corner of Whitley. Sunset, watch cars pass. Well, I'm gonna get one of those, you know, whew, like that. You know, just dreams that came reality. You know what I'm saying? And then when the doggy style come out, then you realize, like, damn, everybody bumping this shit around. Everywhere we go, they was bumping the chronic. Right, the chronic was everywhere. Yeah. I mean, you know, cause and I know it's a good album because I get residuals from that album to this day. To this day, right now. Did you ever meet Easy yourself? Yeah, I met Easy. We was at a uh, award show, and he came up to me and said, finally we meet, Daz. Something like this, and there was just so much going on, and then he bailed off, because, you know, it was at a death row, easy, ruthless records come function at a thing when Magic Johnson was throwing something at it. It was, it was crazy. Okay. I, you made that comment in that skit about easy. Yeah. About bust your ass, HIV, pussy having, and then easy actually ended up dying from HIV. Yeah. Um, how, how did you feel when you when you found out about it? Because obviously you didn't know nothing at the time, but. I didn't know nothing at the time, you know, it's a, it's a shame, you know. I just felt for him and, uh, you know, rest in peace, easy, you know. It was sad. I liked it easy. I, you know, I ain't had nothing against easy, you know what I'm saying? Like Snoop said, we, we love easy. Yeah. I first knew easy when I used to, um, when he came out with radio. When he, had, when he was wearing the, you know, the Air Jordans and all that on the back of the cover, you know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. I was scratching them records and then Snoopy and them used to get dropped off by the DOC in Long Beach. Right. When they used to finish with, e I mean, with Dr. Dre. And he said, yeah, yeah Easy was there, you know what I'm saying? So, man, I love Easy records. Easy was amazing, man. I mean, yeah. he, he's the one that really, I think, really, really got me into West Coast hip hop. Yeah. You know, I, I, cause before there was like, you know, Egyptian lover and you know what I mean? There, Ice there some Ice tea. But when Easy came out, it was like Yeah, Dope wow. Man, Dope Man. You know, I only had the radio version. I mean Boys in the Hood. That was my first yeah. Easy song. Like Boys in the Hood was like Yeah, that was the one right wow. there. Wow. <laughs> that was the one. And then when the album came out, I had it all on cassette. Yeah, me too. You know what I'm saying? I still got those cassettes. Yeah, I had on vinyl, the, the NWA EP, the little four song EP. I didn't get a like... chance to steal them yet, though. <laughs> <laughs> you watched the Corrupt interview? Yeah, I love it. You talk to Corrupt about it? We love it. We, we chitter chatted with him about it all the time. What did you think the first time you saw it? He bust. <laughs> <laughs> That's my nigga, he fucked up.
He kicking the truth. You know, you tell the truth when he fucked up, he gonna let you know. Right. Fuck that shit. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I've seen like hashtag like sleeper cells. Like, you know what hey, I mean? That's like, true like, corrupt for you right there. Don't get him mad. <laughs> The big Do you home. agree with him with his overall stance? Yeah. You know what I mean? So, you know, hey, this is where we from. This is what we do, you know. It's a shame that, you know, East Coast, West Coast war and all that other type of stuff. You know what I'm saying? But, you know. Do you think that the media played the shit up to the point where, where it was? Or was there really a, a real problem with y'all? Not really wasn't a real problem with us. You know what I'm saying? Like, we was cool with Biggie and we was cool with Pac. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But then the media put the fire to it, you know what I'm saying? It was probably good for the sales. It wasn't all that Twitter and Instagram yeah. back then, you know what I'm saying? So it was really like pay what you weigh to get stuff started. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we wasn't really down with it. Well, you know, Corrupt was saying how he, you know, y'all love Puffy, y'all love Biggie, you know, y'all yeah. love East Coast music. I was trying to get Puffy to mix the dog pound out back then. Oh, really? Yeah. You wanted Puffy to mix Dog Pound. Yeah, because I didn't know how to mix back then. Dre, Dre didn't mix it? Take it too long. Oh, that's what it was. <laughs> he was on Dre time. Yeah, but then, you know, <laughs> Shug came and pushed the button, and Dr. Dre came and mixed the album. Okay. You know, I was trying to do things on my own back then. Okay. So, so did you know Biggie? Yeah, I know Biggie. He was cool. He used to come down here, I used to serve him weed. Oh, really? Yeah, I used to come to the studio with him and Mace, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And uh, when he used to come down here and do, you know, the 92.3 little things on the corner with the vans and stuff, mm -hmm. I used to meet him over there. Yeah, Biggie was one of the greats. Yeah, I fuck with him. I did two songs with him that I got in the vault somewhere. Oh, really? Yeah, you I got, got two songs with Biggie? They yeah. never came out? Never came out on my stuff. It was on ADATS. Oh. So, you know, I got him. Pull yeah, them A that out, out and find a machine, but I got them on there, you know what I'm saying? So it was just y'all two? It was just us two. That's crazy. One was a verse, and one he did a hook for me. I heard a rumor about you. You tell me whether it's, it's tr true or false. What? I heard that you and Lil' Kim was an item at one point. Nah, we weren't no item. Nah? That's my homegirl, though. We hung out. Y'all you know just what friends. Saying? I rock with her, you know what I'm saying? We was, you know, you know, that was the, you know, like we said, we was family. We was all hanging out together. You know okay. what I'm saying? You know, we would have knocked the motherfucker down for it. Okay. So what happened after the Source Awards when Suge went on stage and, and kind of see that really to me, that really wasn't the Source Awards that really kicked everything off. Okay. That's the second Source Awards. So nobody really talked about the first Source Awards. Was there a video of that? It should have been. That's when Tupac came out on. Tribe Called Quest. Oh, on their set. When it was accepting the award. Where's that footage at? And then I got up on stage and said, you know, da -da 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 -da, how Snoop gave it up for him like that. Yeah. I got on stage and said, fuck all y'all. <laughs> you know okay. what I'm saying? It was me, Corrupt, Rage, and uh, Nate Dog. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And we went through there and it was it was all New York. We was the only West Coast. We seen Outkast and them, you know what I'm saying? And it was sicker than that second one. Really? Yeah. Okay, so then the second Source Awards happened. Yeah. And then y'all went to go film New York, New York. Yeah. Okay. Now, from what Corrupt told me last time, New York, New York was supposed to be like a, a tribute record to New York. Yeah, it was a tribute record, but they took it the wrong way. Melly Mel wrote the hook. We just got it from him. Right. It's, you know, his song, you know, but they took it like we was jabbing at him. And, you know, and... Uh, Oh, no, well, hell broke loose. I heard it wasn't even supposed to be like, you know, it wasn't supposed to be kind of like a New York disc record, but the shooting happened. Yeah. I okay. don't know. Did it? Did it? Well, I, 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 I researched this a little bit. Y'all went to New York to go film New York, New York, New York, like in Brooklyn, right? Yeah, we went to Brooklyn Red Hook. Red Hook, exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, I had heard that Biggie called in to Hot 97. Yeah, we was down, we was in Times Square, and he got on the radio just literally like, motherfuckers on so-and-so corner right there by the middle of the thing, handle business, and da-da-da-da-da. Right. And people like, don't know that part. Like, people who didn't live in New York, because, you know, yeah, this is before 97. YouTube. 
Right. So Biggie called right. in the Hot 97. To and if tell it was Hot 97, then they was, you know, they record every show, right? Yeah. Hey, pull the files out. No, well, I've talked to people who actually heard it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I've talked he to... He really just told me, yeah, go out there and blast them motherfuckers. Represent this New York. They don't belong out here. They shooting a the video. They got six foes and shit out here and hopping and dropping and all that kind of shit. You know what I'm saying? Because you know what it is? Biggie's always seemed as kind of the victim of this whole thing. And people don't know. You know, just to be fair, people don't know that part. So y'all in New York shooting a video. He calls in a Hot 97 and says, Dog Pound up here in New York shooting a video at this location. Yeah. And then the shooting happened. I mean, you know... People start representing you. It'll be the same way in the West Coast. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, it's an epidemic. It all happens. How close were you and Tupac? We was real close. Uh, you know, we both Gemini's. You know what I'm saying? Y you did uh, Ambitions of a Rider. Yeah. That was, and that was the first song on Tupac's That was the first song we all did eyes when on he me. came to Death Row. Okay, so he, he got out of jail. Got out of jail. Signed to Death Row. Got off the plane. Got off the plane. We like, what up? What up? <laughs> went we, to the studio. No, we went to go eat. Went to go eat. At Monty's. Okay, at Monty's. And then we went to Can Am. Went to Can Am Studios. And then I had the five songs with the hooks already on there. And then he said he liked that one. So he went in there and redid the ambitions of a rider hook. Oh, so you already had the hook written? Yeah. Oh, because so you, you know that hook come from Snoop, you know, like back in the days when he had on Stranded on Death Row. Uh, I'm not flagging, but I'm just sagging. I don't deny it. You know? Oh, same, you know same saying? cadence. Yeah, yeah just yeah. different words, you know, because I had the beat. Boom, 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 boom. You know what I mean? So he came in there and knocked them five out, and I was like, damn. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Was he the fastest working rapper you'd ever seen? Yeah, because he was serious, and that made us get on our job a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So from then on, it was just... Knocked him out, and then DJ Quick came in there and mixed him for me. Right, yeah, Quick was the, was the main DJ during that time. Yeah. Did you know how big, because, uh, I, I, I mean, Tupac was big. We knew Tupac beforehand, though. You know, okay. we did a lot of work with Tupac before he was on Death Row. When he did Juice, we used to go over his house, when he oh. had the laser disc. Right. We was watching it over there, like, hey, come check my movie out, you know what I mean? So, you know, we was already hooked up when you could see old MTV clips and stuff like that from when we was real young, you know what I'm saying? So. Uh -huh. Yeah, and okay. then you know I got him his first big old check. It was like thirty thousand dollars from Death Row when we did a uh, hard on the nigga, but we didn't even put it on Murder was the case. Uh huh. And then we did Gridlock, and then I found that song in the vault, and then we put it on there. But he had got paid for that song, that we got him paid for that song, and we didn't even use it. Right, that was on the Mur yeah, because he showed up on the Murder was the case soundtrack before yeah, I mean, he, he was, was on before he was, he was on Death Row. Yeah, he was on Interscope. Yeah. Okay. How did things change in Death Row when, when Tupac showed up? It was more, shit, we pushing. Pushing even harder, you know what I'm saying? So that's what it was, pushing hard. Okay. And hardly pushing. Um, you did Two of America's Most Wanted. Yeah. How did that song come together? I had a beat and a hook. I was going to sell it to Drew Down. <laughs> okay. But then... <laughs> I can see Drew Down on he that. He went to jail or something, so... <laughs> I had, uh, that was that same night that Tupac was coming into town. Okay. And then uh, Snoop had came to the studio in the middle of the night. Like everything had just getting off the plane, going to the studio, dropping one song, doing another song, then doing two of America one and Snoop walking in the door. Okay, like, so. It all went time-wise, you know what I'm saying? Like click, clock, clock, all right, Snoop walking at three, we done that thing, we doing, I ain't mad at you at 5 in the morning. By 6 in the morning, we was gone. So you did Vicious of a Rider, America's Most Wanted, I Ain't Mad at You. Scandalous. Scandalous. I got my mind made up. Got my mind made up. Uh, all, all the other rappers, like Method Man and Red Method Man? Method Man, we did that at my house. It was, it was originally me, Rage, Method Man, Red Man, and Inspector Deck. Okay. But then Rage didn't want to, she didn't want to bust on it with all the dudes on there like that. So I took it to Dr. Dre's house. And then he had mixed it, and Tupac came and heard it. Was Dre working a lot on the, on the Tupac album, All Eyes On Me? He was working on his album, but you know, when it's album time, we take whatever we got and contribute to let you hear what we got and to put it into that project. Okay. 
So Tupac album come out, uh, All Eyes On Me. Because we had just finished the dog food album. Yeah. So when Tupac came out, we started on his album, which we didn't really get enough time to focus on the dog pound album. It just went three million, so we was like, you know what I'm saying? So we started on that, because I'm a producer, so I really was just producing yeah. albums. I really wasn't touring in nothing, you know what I'm saying? We didn't really start touring until, you know, after all that. Okay. Um, well, you know, when the Dog Food album came out, that was the, f that actually came out independent, right? Priority, Interscope. Okay. Well, why, why, you know, because a lot of people, they talk about, um, Mac Miller's album going number one independent, and they always mention the Dog Food album before his. Yeah. So that that was considered an independent album technically. Yeah. Independent, yeah. So we so got was paid it? off that album. We was balling. I bet. I was seventeen, had millions. Yeah. I, you know, and then I learned through, that's how you learn your business taxes. And, <laughs> you know, I remember one time I was just had about got a check for like seventy thousand, went to the bank, was going to let it cash and. Next day I was going to buy a pound and the money was on hold for taxes for thirty thousand. So I had to sign over that so I knew about you know, I pay these taxes and this money. Exactly. In my name. So that's when I learned to get a company name. Well, I, I remember that, that Dog Pond album, that was one of the best sounding albums at the time. That shit well, sounded so so crisp. You know, you know what I'm talking about? It seemed like the technology almost yeah, you we, know was, what I mean? we was, you know, we was uh, playing instruments on them albums. You know what I'm saying, yeah. and uh, recreating and making it sound good with the quality. You know what I'm saying. Like I said before, uh, Dr. Dre's second student into this music shit. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. So it was Dr. Dre and the Chronic, and it was Daz, the Dog Pound, and whoever else, and Mel Man, and whoever you know, all them other. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. So I learned the quality of music and. You know, between a wave and an MP3. At what point did Dre leave Death Row? Shit. Because Tupac was already out. After that. Yeah, after Tupac's album was, you know, was already released. You know, uh, California Love came out. It was yeah. huge. Dre was, he was in that song. on the second one. Okay. You know, so, and um, I think when he did that, what's that, No Diggity? Yeah. Around that time. Around that time. I mean, from your point of view, why did Dre leave Death Row? Shit, I really don't know. Okay. You know, we was just working. We was just young. We was just wondering why he left, you know what I'm saying? So, okay. But but Tupac was still there, so the energy was still real high. Yeah, the energy was high. My thing was why Dr. Dre left. Probably got to ask Michelle Lay. I asked Michelle Lay. She probably the big cause of it. You think Dre left? I don't want to start no controversy. <laughs> well, I interviewed Michelle A. Uh, I mean, I seen that shit. You know what I'm saying? She fucked Death Row up, too. You know, when she well, came in there trying to be the CEO. Oh, really? Yeah. She was doing all kind of dirt and all that shit. Well, Mich Michelle A has a, has a, a baby with, with, Sh with Dre, and she has a baby with Suge. In the hood, you tell me what is that? Scandalous. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You know, maybe she fucked Tupac or something. You know what I mean? They got a lot to probably do with it. So Everybody you feel that, that, up, you know what I'm that Michelle A being with, with Dre before and shit. Yeah, you after. know, I look at a lot of videos and shit that's on YouTube and shit. And I, I got to find this one video on YouTube where she come in the studio and put her hands <laughs> all on Tupac's chest and his head and shit. And I'm, I'm looking like, damn. Did he get the pussy? You know what I mean? Hmm. So, Suge Knight, Dr. Dre, Tupac. Everything else was cool before then. Dre left, Death Row still on fire. Yeah. Um, but it's turmoil inside the family, but you wouldn't know it. Okay. But well, from the outside, it looked like everything gravy like a motherfucker. But then, but then Tupac gets killed. Shit go haywire. Were you in Vegas? No, we heard about it because they was trying to get us to go to Vegas. And we was like, Dog Pound, we was really on our fuck death row shit, really. You know what I'm saying? We was, At, already, that time. Saying, we was already saying fuck death row. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because we know, we know everybody. You know, so, you know, me, I was young. I was, you know, feisty. I had fights with Suge Knight, Reggie, everybody. 
you know what I'm saying? And winning and slamming motherfuckers at a young age, you know what I'm saying? Well, you were having fist fights for sure. All that shit, slamming his big ass, you know what I'm saying? What were the fights over? Money and sh other little shit and attitudes and, you know, that's why me and him were so close. You and Shook? Yeah, we was close, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So, other little shit like that. Okay, so, Krupp was still with Death Row when, when Pac got killed, right? Because Krupp cause said he was the first person to leave after Yeah, Clay. he left. He was gone already. He was already gone? Yeah, he was gone already. He was in Philly. Okay. Right when Tupac died, yeah. What, what happened after, after Pac got killed? Shit, everybody started doing their own thing, and then it's just turmoil and chaos, and then, you know, I was like, fuck that, we got too much over here, too many songs, and I was trying to figure out how can I get these songs that we did. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So that's when I became CEO of Death Row, president and all that other oh, shit. Oh, you became the CEO of Death Row? Like the president. I was running the shit. Okay, and Shug was the CEO? He was in jail. Shug was in, oh yeah, because after the fight, after the, 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 the Vegas thing, he was caught on tape, kicking yeah. the dude. And, okay, so you were running Death Row? Yeah, Reggie Wright was running it. Okay, for and how I was long? A, and I was a creative force putting the shit together. What came out under your, your reign? At that time, I mean, I was just putting different songs. They had different songs and shit. I was just, you know, the gridlock soundtrack to make it, um, the, um, Tupac gang related. Yeah. And then we fell out after that. You and Shook? Yeah, we fell out. What did y'all fall out about? I suckered them for the reels. I went and took all the reels and made all blanks, rewrote it the titles on there and gave them the reels. And I took off with the real masters. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And, and then you left Death All Row. hell broke, you know. All hell broke. Because Reggie didn't know nothing about putting the reels on there, listening to the tape and all that shit, you know. So, so you had the masters from all your shit or everyone's shit? <sighs> shit, all my shit. All your shit. And Tupac shit that I did, you know what I'm right, saying? Right, you and Tupac had a lot of songs together. Yeah. So I'm just like songs that I ain't even heard yet. Right. Are they coming out? Because the, they announced that, that there's a new Tupac project coming. Is it going to be any, any of your songs? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay. You know what I'm saying? For a long time, you know, me and Michelle A actually talked about this off camera. You know, not that it was private, but she was saying how, you know, people, you know, everyone at Death Row was really crying when Pac got killed. Like, you know, because people are like, oh, you know, there's, there's always the rumor that Suge somehow set him up and something like that, which I thought was always ridiculous. You know? He probably asked that bitch, you pussy. Hey. So you're saying I'm what? fucking Dr. Dre's baby mama. And he fucking you. And I find out, you know, you getting fucked. What you supposed to do? I mean, you know what? Hey. You put that epidemic together. Hmm. What is that? I heard a rumor. toe three and a half, you know. <laughs> I mean, well, there was a rumor that Pac wanted to leave Death Row before he was killed. Is that true? If I get into it about the bitch and do all the other shit, I want to leave too. You know what I mean? This bitch fucking shit up. Hmm. You know what I mean? That's how I look at it. She want to put the blame on Dr. Dre busting the nose and all that shit. That's dirty doing a homie like that. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Bitch, you was slanging pussy everywhere. You know what I'm saying? And that was Suge's girlfriend at the time? You know, all it was all sneak shit going on. You know what I'm saying? Money make you fuck anything moving around there. She didn't wasn't liking what Dr. Dre was doing. She wanted to feel some type of way. Suge came in as the big. And then Tupac came in and she was so enthused, a star, you know, it's just, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it's Gemini's is sneaky. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, okay. hey, you know, you turn your back with fuck your bitch, you hear me? So what you working on right now outside of the movie project? We working on a dog pound album right now. Dads and Corrupt, Corrupt and Dads. We got a documentary coming out. You know what I'm saying? And uh, we got a movie called Ain't No Fun that we putting together right now. Man, oh, Corrupt. Ain't No Fun? Yeah. The homies can't have none. And you do know that. <laughs> it's like a house party. Kid and play type. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, really? Yeah, it's comedy. Snoop Dogg got trap flicks. 
you know what I'm saying, Hood Flicks, you want to go down there, subscribe right now. You know what I'm saying? You can watch all the hood movies that ain't never coming out that's out on Traflix right now. Traflix.com. And, uh, you know, it's just a mixtape that me and Snoop coming out with. You know, we got a group called Cousins. So you and Snoop have an album or a mixtape? We got an album mixtape. You know, I don't really make mixtapes, but I make albums, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, so it's all original music. Yep, and we got L.A. Party Machine. You know, I was making up different albums. You know, I'm just putting music together. Well, you've always been doing that. You know, I, I remember you used to tell me you used to just go to, like, State to state, state put albums just together. Put an album out with whoever the hot rapper is in that state, and then yeah, boom. the producers. You know what I'm saying? Give me ten yeah. tracks. Let's go and get busy. Put it out. That's what I was doing digital way back then. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like you ain't got to press them up. You just upload. How involved was David Kenner at Death Row? Shit, he was one of the motherfucking owners. He was one of the owners of Death Row. Uh, what I, you know, shit, he wouldn't put it together. Right, because oh, you need a lawyer to put something together like that, contract wise. And, Business-wise, right? right? You know, he ain't finna get cut out. Well, I mean, not not necessarily because a lawyer is a lawyer. He was right? everywhere. A lawyer c could just get his lawyer fee. A lawyer doesn't necessarily Watch have to be Watch the death row movie. You, you know, you tell me if he uh, didn't get cut in or he got cut in. It was interesting to me that, that Suge fired David Kenner as his lawyer because he But he's didn't. still working for him. He fired him. He didn't want him to be in the court building. So that's why he said this other dude still worked for David Kenner's law firm. Oh, so he's still with David Kenner. Yeah, he just didn't want David Kenner in there. He's like, man, fuck you, you little stiff face fucker. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because David Kenner must have got a, a motherfucking operation or something because he looked different. Yeah, it looks like he got a facelift. Yeah, he, so you know. He, that man's like 60-something years old or something. Ain't he? Yeah, he, he got half the money from Death Row. He got half the money. Shit, what do you think? He got in, got out. So you made hundreds of millions. Yeah, yeah. Why do you think should have said, man, I don't think, you're my last resort. Please, man. If I ain't did anything for you, you motherfucker, what help me. Please. What do you think about the whole blindness thing? P.O.P. <laughs> <laughs> Hold it down. Hold it down. I'm legally blind. I'm going to be honest, though. After seeing that tape, I could see... David Chappelle doing that? I can, well, I can see <laughs> I can see reasonable doubt. You know what I mean? I can see the jury saying there's a reasonable doubt that maybe... They're going to look at all that TMZ shit he was on their floors and yeah, because I'm going to get for the big payback. You know what I mean? What's the difference between that and that? Yeah, I mean, you know, he ran over people before in, in a video. I mean, you know, that's what, that's what the DA doing, that shit now. So they... I'm just an observer. I just look at the shit. That's my opinion. I'm looking for the person who lived with Suge Knight. They're wiping him out right now. They're stealing everything. What, what do you mean? Motherfucker who lived with him. His girlfriend, somebody fucking who got the keys to his house. Or all the shit in there, that big earring that he be wearing. I know they even pawn on that motherfucker. Yeah, I mean, 20, <laughs> $25 million bail? Like I'm going in there and rob whoever got the $25 million bail. I'm taking everything out of his house because he won't be coming back. That's going to hit him now. That's what they do. You go to jail, yeah. motherfucker close to you, they gonna hit you. They gonna get everything, especially if you got a $25 million bail. You motherfucker ain't done again. Because with $25 million bail, you gotta put up $2.5 million. And that's where he probably had cash to get out on the first $2.5 million, which is $250,000. Right. So, $2.5 million. Is, you know. yeah, and, and you gotta find a company that's actually willing to put up, you know, because there, there's a reasonable chance that sugar be out. You know, if I he had some people when they came with that twenty five million, he's like decline. <laughs> you had a lawsuit against Suge that yeah. went on for a while, but you you won that lawsuit, right? Yeah, I won that lawsuit. It had to do with a lot with publishing money, not money that he had personally, but money that was in held up. Oh, okay. And that we get now. Okay. That's a part of the. You know what I'm are, you, are you happy with the way the lawsuit worked out? What you think? What you when I pull up outside? What you think? <laughs> hey, you know I'm not a flossable type guy, but I like to be flossable. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? It's nice to have nice things. Hey, you know I'm a good manager. Yeah. Okay, but it seems like the, the beef with you and Suge has been going on forever. Yeah. I mean, you know, he beat us out a lot of shit. You know. So, so he, there's still money that you feel you're you're owed. Now. As far as like the new people that's licensing our shit out, 
Mm. And like I had a problem with people that was using our lyrics. And I was asking the publisher, what's, what's up with this? You know what I'm saying? Because you go on the site called whosampled.com. Right. And you put, you know, artist's name. It show you everybody that and took a piece of song from you. Right. And I'm like, everybody been taking lyrics for years and making, building their, you know, they social network and they, you know, album sales off lyrics that we did. You know what I'm saying? So right. That's called, you know, shit. Hey, I that's want publishing. my I want my shit, you know so what I'm saying? You never got all that. I mean, I was fighting for it all these years, you know what I'm saying? But now I finally got the attention, you know what I'm saying? Because everybody, you know, we the homies, but I'm like, fuck that shit, this is business. Right. You know what I'm saying? Well, I don't mean, hang Snoop, with you niggas. Uh, Snoop and Shug worked it out at one point. Yeah, but we didn't. Snoop yeah. used to say, man, keep dad's back. <laughs> <laughs> keep dad's back. I'm like, fuck that shit. I could have jumped out on his ass in Vegas, but I, you know, it was killing me. But Snoop was like, hold on, don't fuck this up. So I'm like, you know, I respected that. I'll get him another day. But I ain't got to get his ass, you know. Karma and the Lord works in good, mysterious ways. You seen the video? Yeah, I seen it. It's a shame what he did, you know. Dang, I don't wish nothing, you know, no bad on nobody, but hey. You mentioned that, I think uh, on your Instagram, did he churn informant? Look how this nigga Suge Knight is walking up and the police is shaking his hand. Does that look like a police informant to you? Look, hey, how you doing? And hey, we're not going to convict you. Shit, I ain't never had that many cases and still on the street, you know what I'm saying? Suge, yeah, Suge always gets out. That's what I mean. So shit, I've, he used to work with the police at Rampart. You know what I'm saying? Look at all. What do you mean? I mean, you know, he had a lot of officers that worked for him in the Rampart Police Department. In terms of security? Yeah, all the motherfuckers. They don't, you know, they dirty though. You know what I'm saying? They put a restraining on me for life, a restraining order on me for life. We so should. I, man, I get tagged every time I go somewhere. But what do you mean? Man, that's what the police said, man. We never seen no shit like this, man. It's come from a higher source or something like this, man. And I'm like, damn, this motherfucker been on me for 20 years. So what do you mean by tagged? Like when I go through customs and I go out of, you know, the country, I always get pulled over. And they oh. ask me, you know. Oh, interesting. Right. So I okay. got to go to court for that, but I'm getting it off, but because they like, this is unheard of. So every time you leave the country... Something yeah. triggers an investigation. A sure night tag pop up on me. Okay. You know what I'm saying? For being on death row. I don't know if it was a federal or what. You know, back then, there was a lot of shit going on. So, you know, I used to think I was being tailed all the time. Yeah. Still do to this day, you know. Probably all are, to a certain degree. I mean, you know, but they find I'm just going to the dispensary. <laughs> That's legal out here, too. So. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, I mean, Suge is on strike number two, though. He's still on strike number three. He's on strike number three? Yeah. I mean, this case or the case before? If you, you already went to, you know, probation, so that's first strike already when they put you on probation. Okay. You've been to the penitentiary. That's the second strike. And you got two cases now, so that's two, three, four, and one strike. You know what I mean? So, hey. California don't be playing out here with these gangbang laws and the other shit, you know what I'm saying? They trying to make an example out of motherfuckers. It's a shame, you know what I'm saying? So, hey, that's the life of a gangster. I was talking to someone uh, not too long ago, and they were telling me how Nate Dogg was really the most gangster one out of the crew. Me and Nate Dogg was the gangster. <laughs> uh, everybody was gangster out of the crew. We, me and Nate was just the robbers of the crew, you know? Yeah, well, Michelle A, in our interview, that hasn't come out yet, mentioned that at one point Nate Dogg robbed the Taco Bell. Man, that bitch lying, she incriminating the homie already. <laughs> She's a snitch. All right, but well, you and Nate Dogg was, the, yeah, you was know. the criminals of the crew. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, we put it down in the crew, you know what I'm saying, so you know when it come to whooping ass, <laughs> see the Nate Dogg of dads. You know what I'm saying? Corrupt would tell you that. Uh, how much did it hurt when Nate Dogg passed so young? Man, that hurt me. You know what I'm saying? Because I went to see him before he died and how he was looking. It just, you know, made me get myself together. You know what I'm saying? 
Because how old was he? Like 30 something? Yeah. Like 30, 37, 38, something like that. Yeah. So, you know, um, just eating right, living right, you know what I'm saying? And just getting it together. Um, what exactly happened to him? Like, what, what he did he He had a stroke or something the first time, and he had a second stroke, you know? So. I mean, you know what, what Nate Dogg did? I mean, like, you never seen a singer, like, sing like a rapper. You know what I mean? It, and it seemed like so many people have, you know, like, oh, Akon's the new Nate Dogg. Like, you know, and every so often you get this, oh, Jeremiah, the new Nate Dogg. Like, you know, mm. when, when you have someone who, who does that, they always get compared back to Nate Dogg. Shout out to the Migos, man. They gave it up for the homie Nate Dogg, man. You know, I like the Migos. Yeah, shout out to Nate Dogg. I had to regulate. You motherfucking right. You know what I'm saying? Just a uh, big homie going to be here forever. You know, music going to be here to the end of time. Well, Snoop tattooed his face on, on his arm, right? Yeah, he did that. I was there for that one. Was that his first tattoo? No, that wasn't his first tattoo. Okay. Yeah, he got the ones on the arm first. Then oh, he okay. went and got that one. Okay, so like his second tattoo. Yeah, third tattoo. Third One, tattoo. two. Oh, oh, okay. I thought. Okay, I see what you're saying. Um, yeah, man, th that shit was sad. Yeah, that yeah. really hurt me. You've been around so long, but I'm so looking so young. Yeah, L looking just the same as when yeah. you came out. Best but you know, we've seen so many rappers come and go mm -hmm. during the time. Why do you think Snoop? You know, because it seems like every time I see Snoop, you're always there. You know, you always you always rolling with him. Yeah. Seems like y'all two are hella close. It's my cousin. Exactly. You know, but people, you know, cousins aren't always close. I have cousins I don't talk to that much. Yeah. You know, y'all y'all see. But we really grew up close. as from day one, you know, taking baths together, sleeping in the same bed every day. Was you guys grew up in the same house? Right, you know, I used to go over his house every day because my mama and his mama, his best friends, and his daddy is my uncle. Ah, okay. So but when nobody keep us because we were so bad. <laughs> <laughs> they try to push you away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take Snoopy and Dale, Ma. And dial it out, you know what I'm saying? So we was always stuck together. Okay. Why do you think Snoop is as big as he is this long after he came out? Man, he got a great mind, man. He, he's like a visionary, man. He just, he can shoot dice real good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, motherfucker that shoot dice real good gonna be lasting long, you know what I'm saying? So he just an innovator, man. He just... He does the damn thing, man. You don't see artists with uh, a like, 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 like for example, you don't see no other rappers anywhere near his age range on Empire. <laughs> you know, what I mean, the hottest urban TV show. You know, premiering his new song. Yeah. Twenty something. Like, I mean, he came out what 90, 90, 92, 90, 91. 91? Yeah, the end of ninety one. Deep cover. Well, yeah, deep cover ninety one. This is two thousand ninety nine two. You're talking about almost 25 years. Yeah. So almost 25 years after he came out, he's still popping. Popping. Mm-hmm. You know where? That's a great team. You're only talking about a couple of human beings have ever done that. I mean, you're talking about Snoop, Jay Z, Eminem, huh? Sinatra. Sinatra was getting fit for a long time. Sinatra. So checked out. So, so you you put him in the category of a uh, yeah. Sinatra, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know something? I, I, I'm not. I'm not mad at that. Man, everybody knows who Snoop Dogg is. I mean, we done been to places you wouldn't believe it in. Snoop Dogg? <laughs> <laughs> well, we put up the picture, I think, in Korea with a dude with a black face. Yeah. Yeah, man. Snoop we're on our way to Seoul, Korea. Were you with Snoop at the, when you went to the White House? No, I wouldn't, they wouldn't let me. They wouldn't let me up in there. <laughs> the, uh, the, the, the Shug, the Shug uh, restraining order was still in effect during that time? Yeah, it's still in effect now. Shit. You know, I, I talked to Schoolboy Q yeah. a while back, right? And, and he, he a Hoover Crip. Yeah. And he said that, that the gang banging situation in L.A. ain't nearly as bad as it was in the 90s and 80s. In the 80s and the 70s, it was, it was even worse. That's when colors came out. Yeah, the crack era. Yeah, all that type of shit. You know, really we grew out of that, but it's slowly but surely moving from there to the East Coast and down South. Right. Now they act like they from the 80s and the, in the 90s. Huh, that's an interesting way of looking at it. You know so, what I'm saying? So. Like it's all going backwards. And then when they come out here, 
we we don't really tolerate none of that shit. You know what I'm saying? We're about getting to the money out here. Right. You know what I'm saying? Or oh, it's just straight action. Like, how many friends have you lost from violence, personally? Shit, a lot of them. More than on my hand, toes and shit, you know what I'm saying? Right. And family members and different type of epidemics that go down from, you know, cancer, my uncle Junebug, you know what I'm saying? Right, oh yeah, right. Absolutely. You know, from homies getting shot up, you know what I'm saying? Heart attacks, strokes, diabetes, you know what I'm saying? My father got Alzheimer's right now, so yeah. I'm dealing with that situation, you know what I'm saying? From walking to not walking, to me holding him yeah. and taking care of him and holding him like he hold me, you know what I'm saying? So tables turn, you just gotta be a man and handle them responsibilities. And if you ain't a man, it's gonna show, and that's when you fall off. I mean, what do you think was the, the worst situation that you were in, in terms of all the gangbang shit? Shit, the first situation is uh, getting shot at a studio at Echo Sounds. You got shot at? Yeah, one of our friends died that night. You know what I'm oh, saying? Wow. Somebody came from the corner, shot. Do you even know what it was about, or no, just some random I mean, shit? I didn't even know what it was. You know, it was Echo Sound Studio, Ice Cube. Uh, everybody recorded there, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So it was just one of those hot spots. Wrong time, wrong day. Right. So, I know. mean, did, what did you, you know, coming, coming from that type of environment, being 17, and, and being kind of a magnet for that type of thing, because y'all y'all had your gang, gang flags high, yeah. you know, in your music. You know what I'm saying? Like y'all was wasn't Bloods and Crips. Yeah, exactly. But but both but all y'all was was really repping that shit hard. So, you know, that element would get attracted to that at the shows being out and stuff like that. Like what did you have to really do different in your life? Cause cause you're not just a random a random crip no more. You you dads. Man, you gotta handle your business, you know. I move solo, so I ain't really you know you know, I know how to chunk them and you know, get out for mine, so I don't really need all niggas doing nothing for me, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I hang with a bunch of gorillas and, you know, hyenas and so, you know, hey, it's natural. I, I think that the first time it may have been the first time I actually saw you face to face was was hanging out in the studio with BMF. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're my homeboy. Yeah, with Big Meech and actually with Blue Da Vinci. Blue Da Vinci had like a little in studio thing in LA. They yeah. just flown me out yeah. to hang out with them because they, they like my mixtapes, like Blue and them. Yeah, you know, just my boy. Just you know, we all was family. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Just uh, I'm a hustler. I go everywhere. You know what I'm saying? And they gravitate to us. We gravitate to them. You know what I'm saying? So I was there. That that was that was some of the funniest shit I've ever done hanging out with BMF. Yeah, they was I mean, balling out of control. It, it was, no, but, but when you say balling out of control, I mean out of control. I mean out of control. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. like they would go to the strip club with a hundred thousand, and that's just one person. Everybody else got a hundred thousand too. Exactly. And it's twenty million dollars worth of cars outside. Right. Exactly. And that's when I went out there and shot "Make It Rain," the movie that I shot "Make It Rain." Oh, okay. At the height, I said, "Man, I got to capture this shit." <laughs> <laughs> oh, so so you actually got the idea from fucking with them. Yeah, I fuck with Meech and them, so I was, yeah. I was like, I'm DJ Funky. So I just went out there, took my money, and put a script together, and shot a movie called Make It Rain. It ain't came out yet because I'm, you know, figuring out the business side and, you know, putting my shit out because, you know, the internet phew, everywhere. But it's going to come out. It's a classic movie. Got everybody from Atlanta in there. Also, it never came out? No, it never came out. I got Candy in there. I got Rashida in there. I got... Alpha Mega in there, I got BMF in there. Huh. Man, I got all Atlanta, all the top DJs in there. That's dope. Cause you know they fuck with dads, I fuck with them and my it, family in it's, Atlanta. It's got, it's got BMF in full swing. And you do know that. Oh, uh, what, what was the wildest shit that you seen uh, Meech do? Shit, ball out, pour champagne, do you know, do the, un you know, the, the unordinary. You know what I'm saying? Just balling out of control. Yeah, because I, I remember... No limits. I, I remember Blue and Jeezy told me about this one time where he rented a 747 jet. I, I don't think anyone has done it. And we'll not do it or like since, that. Uh, like BMF. Yeah, he won't do it like that. Now with uh, this crew, and that, what, what me say? I don't know, a crew, black, yeah, this yeah. bitch money can't get along. Yeah. <laughs> 
bitch. We ain't gonna fall out over a bitch or whatever. No money, you want a nigga, you can get the fat one, the big one, the light skin one, the black one. <laughs> Whatever you like. Yeah. Shout <laughs> out to Big Meech. If you want to share with the homie. Homegirl Janelle. You dig? At one point, you and Corrupt were at odds. Yeah. But now y'all are cool as hell. Yeah. You know, what What caused y'all to be cool again after, after like, beefing for a few years? You know, I remember we, when me and you were working on that mixtape together, I went to go see Corrupt, and I'm like, oh, well, you know, I just want to say, just let you know me and Dad's doing some shit together. He's like, no, we don't really fuck with Dad's, and it was kind of tense. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then when I saw y'all y'all was making songs together, I'm like, yeah, that's what's up. Like, yeah, I, 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 I want to see that. I reached out to him. You know what I mean? Because you know I love him. He wanted to reach out to me, but you know what I'm saying? But I reached out to him. It was all Suge Knight doing all that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And kick back. Okay, okay, no, stop. No, stop. You know, that type of shit. So, you know, it got to that. But, you know, it was bigger than that. Y'all the dog pound. Yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, what? how, how can y'all be beefing? And let's get this thing back together. You know what I'm saying? We ain't never hurt each other. We could have. Right. Could have been a lot of that. But we never did that. You know what I'm saying? Right. My focus was on Suge Knight. You know, catching him slipping everywhere I could get him. What, were you upset that he went back to death row afterwards? Yeah, because we had just talked about that, and then he went back, and then, you know, and the whole nine. But you know, we here now, kicking and going, and, and he there. You know right. what I mean? And, and he said, because I interviewed him, I don't know if we put this part out yet or, or not, but he said that, you know, you and Snoop accepted him back. Yeah, cause that's our, that's our brother corrupt. You know what I'm saying? It's the dog pound. We run this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? We got too many songs to be not doing nothing. And the way that going with Suge Knight, that's not the way right now, because he don't give a fuck about you. You know what I'm saying? If you look at the shit that, you know, you were involved in, mm -hmm. a lot of important songs, a lot of important times, like, like, like what music do you think you're most proud of yourself? I'm, pr I'm proud of all the chronic stuff, everything that I did. Like I said before, I reached the pinnacle of rap. But were you on 2001? Dr. Dre? Yeah. No. No. But Corrupt, Corrupt was on it, though. I was still on death row around that time. Really? Yeah. Were you on death row when they put out the Chronic 2000? Yeah. But whose idea was that? That was Suge Knight's idea. He was trying to get back at Dr. Dre. Right, because every, Dre was announcing that he was coming out with the Chronic 2000, and then Death Row drops a compilation album called 2001. The Chronic 2000. And they got one called Getting Gangsta on the Radio. Some bullshit shit, man. Putting together. And then he came with the fake Snoop Dogg and the fake Tupac. But they had the realist. But you were at Death Row at the time. I never fucked with none of those guys, though. I used to be in and out, get my money and get the fuck up out of there. I don't what? fuck with none of you punks. Was Crooked Eye uh, on the label at the time? And Crooked Eye was over there and then, um, when I was leaving, he wanted to stay, and that's where we had our funkin', you know, our beef and stuff like that. Y'all worked it out? I mean, you know, it's cool. We ain't never talked to none of that other shit. You know, you do his thing, I do my thing, but you know, he cool. Did you know right away when Kendrick Lamar did the control verse that that was a corrupt verse? Yeah. You caught that right away? Yeah, I caught that right away, because okay. I was listening to the one that he did with Terrence Martin. Mm -hmm. So, and then Corrupt was telling me about it. And it all blew up. And I'm just like, shit, hey, that's the little homie. Handle. How, how, how did you feel coming? You know what I mean? Because it's almost a continuation of what y'all, you know what I mean? By quoting corrupt, it's, it's kind of like the family tree type of type of thing. I mean, it's all, it's all related, man. Like I yeah. said before, that Dr. Dre tree. Yeah. That's a big branch. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we all stick together, you know what I'm saying? Like, Shit, they call me Uncle Daz now. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I fuck with everybody. And I love it. What do you think of the new uh, Kendrick album? I love it. Yeah. I got this shit in the car right now. King Kunta. King Kunta. Motherfucking Ryan Kunta on these hoes. It, it almost seems like there's kind of a move back into, you know, remember how it was in like the, the late 80s where all yeah. the hot rappers were the conscious rappers? I mean, tell it. Yeah, the brand Nubians. It, Brand Nubian. Lord Jamal. Yeah. Shout out to Lord Jamal. Yeah, you watched Lord Jamal? Yeah, he be kicking it real. I like that. Yeah? yeah. He don't be taking no shit. 
<laughs> from no motherfuckers. Period. Peace to the gods. You hear me? He's like a Dick Gregory of hip hop. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. He like the Dick Gregory of hip hop. That, that, that's actually a Your real... dad said that first, man. All right, man. So I think we good. Anything else we're you want to add? Hey, man. Shout out to Vlad TV having me here. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to everybody. East Coast, West Coast, down south. I see y'all everywhere. I'm Daz Dilly. I'm out. Peace.